let's start with epithelial, subepithelial. And if you see a hat, it's the top layer, so epithelium. Uh, Bowman is a bow tie, and then stromal is strumly metatella. So the first one is gelatinous. You only need to know a few things. Number one, gelatinous is amyloid. It's amyloid deposits. So just think of, you know, uh, you're kind of in line and you see, uh, you know, these jellies. I should have put a jelly bean. That probably would have helped. Jelly beans. And then there's a picture of Amy Schumer because it's amyloid de deposits. It kind of looks like mulberries. And that's just another buzzword. It's autosomal recessive. And it's on the Tic Tac or the Tax 2 gene. So just think of Tic Tac uh, mint. If you remember this, if they ever have anything that looks like this, they're going to tell you it is autosomal dominant, excellent dominant, excellent receptive, just, oh God, Reese's Pieces, autosomal recessive. What's the gene? Tic Tac, Tax 2. Like, that's just how it's going to be. The next one that's epithelial is Miesman. Miesman was on my old caps. The way that I remember it is. I remember a superhero whose name is Mies, and he goes by Mies Man. It's a very peculiar name because on electron and on uh, histology, you'll see a peculiar substance. You'll actually have a question on it, on uh, optical questions, but I didn't want to use it uh, because I couldn't find a good picture on Google. Um, Mies Man is also known as juvenile hereditary epithelial dystrophy. Again, it's affecting the epithelium, and it is hereditary because it's a dystrophy, and, but it's it's common in juvenile, so this is why it's Shazam, because Shazam is a juvenile. This is how it looks like. It's these small epithelial microcysts, and the microcysts, they are pass positive, and uh, they, they, they retro-illuminate. So that's why he's turning his back here, because it's, it's, you can see it best when they retro-illuminate. In regards to, uh, you know, Dominance, it's autosomal dominant. This is, again, Vin Diesel. He's a superhero. He plays Groot. So you'll see Groot a couple of times, and that's still Vin Diesel, still autosomal dominant. And it's in the K3 or the K12 gene. If you subtract it, it's a K9, who's also a superhero, and it's the keratin gene. Again, these microcysts are PAS positive. That's measement. You don't want to confuse Miesman with Lish epithelial corneal dystrophy. They both have microcysts, but with Lish epithelial corneal dystrophy, uh, it's a band or a feathery lesion. So I think of like Lish with, as Victoria's Secret because it's like feathery lesions. And then we're done. We're done with the epithelial corneal. Now we're going to go into the epithelial stromal. The epithelial stromal is all this TGF beta. So I think of as Tweety. Growth factor bird. I think of a big, every time I see that, it's TGF beta. And that's always on chromosome 5, Q31. And it's the big H3 gene. So granular dystrophy is the first one. It's a grandma. And she is bilateral, so two of it. It's affecting both eyes. All these dystrophies are both eyes. Um, and she's swooning over a picture of, you know, Vin Diesel, who's, again, autosomal dominant. Um, it's Tweety Bird, and he's got a bow tie. He's strumming the guitar. So it's epithelial, it's Bowman's, and it's stromal. And she's wearing a hat. So epithelial, Bowman, and it's stromal. The way that it looks, now aside from just remembering granular, okay, cool, you've got like buzzwords. This is how it looks. Notice how there's spaces here where it doesn't affect it. This is different than macular dystrophy, where the whole cornea is cloudy. This is not, there's a certain area, it's called breadcrumb deposits. Whenever you think of these dystrophies, the first thing that you should do is write down the mnemonic. Marilyn Monroe always gets her man at LA County. I know that sounds stupid, but you're going to have a question and it's going to say macular mason trichrome. You're going to be like, yep, Marilyn Monroe always. That's not true. It's Marilyn macular mucopolysaccharides alcyon blue. So that's why you have to write it down and it'll just make your life easier. And you'll just get those questions easy. This is Mason trichrome. It's different colors. There's white, there's pink, there's blue. It's Mason trichrome. And you'll have these hyaline deposits pretty much scattered like breadcrumbs all across. And it affects Bowman's and it'll affect the stromal as well. It's pretty, it's, 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 it's at all levels of the cornea. This is just to go into in depth. Granular can have even different types of granular. Reese, Buckle, Reese Buckler is type three granular dystrophy. It's really bad and these kids lose vision at like 10 years. Avelino is type two 
granular dystrophy. This is a mix between granular and lattice, and it presents later in the 20s. It's also Bowman stromal epithelial, and it has an abnormal keratoepithelial, so just think of the cat keratoepithelial. And then just to, just to differentiate between Reese Buckler and Theo Benke, it's only one thing. Reese Buckler is really, they're both very similar in the sense that it's epithelial, it's stromal, it's bone, it's the same thing, it's bilateral. But with Reese Buckler, they're going to say if these guys have such bad corneas, if you do a graft, will it survive? And the answer is no. It's just very frequent, it's very severe, more so than with Reese Buckler. With Theo Benke, just think of Tweety Bird's hair is curly. It has these curly fibers, and you can see it here on the histology. It's a sawtooth appearance, and just think of Tweety saying, I saw, I saw a pretty cat. So sawtooth appearance, curly fibers, curly as your hair, that's steel banky. That's the only thing they're gonna test you on. If they showed you a picture of this, it'd be so hard to say, could this be steel banky, could this be, but they may end up just showing you a picture like this, but notice how here it's like a sawtooth pattern. And they'll say it. Lattice dystrophy, again, Marilyn Monroe always. I didn't even say Marilyn Monroe yet because Marilyn Monroe is stromal purely. We're on epithelial stromal. So we got gets her man, that's granular, at LA County. That's Los Angeles, amyloid, Congo red. And so that's why you have Hollywood, because it's Los Angeles. This is what lattice looks like. This was also very similar to a picture on OCAPS. And we know that lattice is also amyloid. So we know the idea of birefringence, dichroism, and polarized light, because we know about amyloid from the stomach, amyloid in the liver, amyloid in the neck. This is the same thing, except it's amyloid in the cornea. That's lattice dystrophy. The only other buzzword to remember is that it starts anterior, and then this is the back of the Hollywood side, it goes posterior. It's also part of the TGF beta 1 gene. So just think of Tweety Birds, also a celebrity, autosomal dominant. He's a celebrity in Hollywood. And it's again epithelial, stromal, bilateral. Now we're on purely stromal. Fleck dystrophy. And, you know, they, there's only a couple of buzzwords, but I remember this movie Fletch. You know, he, he could see very well in it. So even though it is a corneal dystrophy, you could still see very well. Vision is not usually decreased. It's characterized by the buzzword here is dandruff-like deposits. So I think of Chevy Chase and his cool hair, and he was saying, is my hair okay? And then it also, you could stain it in alcyon blue, which is, which is like macular dystrophy, as well as lipid, which is like Schneider's. So just kind of an interesting thing that it could test, you, could, you, could, uh, you could do histology both ways, because it has excess gags as well as excess lipid. So with the lipid, you could, you could stain it with oil, red O, and Sudan black. So just, he's thinking about Sudanese food, and he's kind of chubby. And, and then uh, it's autosomal dominant. He's pointing a gun, he's pointing a gun. That's the only thing I can find. Again, so now we're purely stromal. This is the Marilyn Monroe always. So I have a picture of Marilyn Monroe. It's mucopolysaccharides. And notice that it's not subepithelial. It's not coming near the epithelial. This is all stromal. So it's only affecting stroma. But unlike granular dystrophy, this affects the entire cornea. Sometimes they'll show you pictures where it's super early on and you're like, God, it's so early on. But if it's later on, granular will not affect the entire cornea. But macular will affect it from limbus to limbus. So the way I remember it is limbs to limbs. Uh, it's chromosome 16, 16, Alcy in blue. She's next to the C. It's a defect in carbohydrate sulfotransferase 6, which is this chest. So a lot of things you could just kind of put together with Marilyn Monroe. And then lastly, I don't know if they can really test it, but they could do an ELISA test, and that can show it in preclinical state, the sulfated keratin sulfate. So I just remember her hair, cell, uh, you know, keratin sulfate with her hair. And she's eating a Reese's Pieces, so it's autosomal recessive. Trust me, they'll just test you on that. And a lot of people will say it's autosomal dominant. They're all autosomal dominant. Nope. No Vin Diesel here. She's eating the Reese's Pieces. We're still in stromal. We're going to separate it into Schneider corneal dystrophy and, and congenital stromal corneal dystrophy, which is CSCD. I think of it as siesta. So Schneider, I think of Rob Schneider. 
and this is what Snyder dystrophy looks like. And he's saying you bad. So just remember, it's the you bad gene. He has a kind of a chubby gut. So think of cholesterol, phospholipids, check his cholesterol levels. If you see this cornea, you should think Schneider, and one of the tests you should do is check his cholesterol. And because again, it's lipids, it stains with Sudan black and with oil red O. That's what lipids stain with. Siesta, or his congenital stromal corneal dystrophy, I have 12, I have 12. It's because it's chromosome 12, which they do test you on. And it's called a decorin gene. That's why it's decorating. They're decorating the whatever pinatas. Um, he's eating. He's got a present because it's present at birth. He's strumming the guitar again. He's a stromal, it's stromal and Schneider's as well. And he's eating cornflakes because it's got these whitish flakes that are clouding the central cornea, but the peripheral cornea is usually okay. You know, you can have moderate to severe visual loss. So then you'll say, well, how the heck can I test? How do I know it's not? which one is which. I mean, obviously you could do oil red O and it'll snow up Schneider's. But one of the ways is that unlike Schneider's, um, uh, CSCD is very slowly progressing, if not even progressing at all. So just think of them again, they're in the siesta. They're not gonna be doing anything. Schneider's can get worse and they're both autosomal dominant. We're on endothelial, only two, I think. There's Ched, and I think of the country Chad. So I think of a, a stag in, in, in Chad, and it's for nystagmus, because this is a congenital hereditary endothelial. Their endothelium is so bad that they really cannot see that they're just going to have nystagmus. In addition, their cornea, think of Lake Chad, is going to be blue because it's so thickened in the demitis. This also um, does not get worse, even though CS, siesta is very slowly worse. So Schneider's got worse fast, Siesta got worse very slowly, but Shed is stationary. Once you get it, you've got nystagmus, it's done. I mean, it's, 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 it doesn't get any worse. And, and again, the last thing is, is, just think of a dark rhesus pieces. It's kind of mean, but I'm, I'm African too. So dark rhesus pieces. Okay, autosomal recessive. So PPMD is the last one. PPMD, you have to, it, it's, it's a posterior polymorphous, uh, dystrophy, and it looks very much like ICE syndrome. The difference between ICE syndrome is this, is that ICE syndrome only affects one eye, whereas PPMD is bilateral. That's all you really have to know. But it can be just like ICE, it can have iris atrophy, because again, it's so posterior that it's touching the iris, it's causing correctopia, it's causing this corneal adhesions, it's posterior. So it looks just like ICE, except ICE is, is, is unilateral. 